Our guests come here tonight to place their greatest fears, their most terrifying anxieties into the Room 101 vault. Joining me tonight, a sporting legend, a dynamic commentator, and a wordy wordsmith, all rolled into one. Please welcome the mighty mongrel himself, H.G. Nelson. H.G. The Mighty Mongrel. The Mighty Mongrel. An excellent introduction. And before we get going, can I say what a great thrill it is to be on a show dedicated to hate. <laughs> let's sit down, let's talk about it. Oh, man. How are you? It's been a while. Fantastically fit. Fit as a trout. You look good. Thanks, Paul. You know, I was standing out the back there waiting to come on before the Mighty Mongrel introduction, and I had a whole new raft of hates that I thought I should have put on my list. I don't feel I'm surprised by that at all. <laughs> no. So you've got to remember, as you've discovered early on in your career, the things that give you the shits are the most entertaining things of all because you feel great about them. You feel determined that you want to put your point of view across. That's what Room 101's a, a, a balm, an absolute balm, <laughs> a poultice on society. It's great because people can come on this show and smear that rubbish all over the television screens and they feel, you know, relieved. Shall we get smearing? Yeah, smear straight in? Yeah, smear on. Okay, I'm going to smear away. Mm. Okay. Explain. This is uh, Totem Tennis. Totem Tennis. <laughs> now, am I surprised it's about sport? No, you're not. But this isn't really sport, because <laughs> there's no sporting skill required. All you do is stand and build this ball around this thing here, and we might be able to demonstrate. So if I do this, whee, and then it comes oh, back to me. Are you going forehand, That's backhand? Oh, I'm right? going both ways. Oh. Oh, where is it? Get is your it? eye in, get your eye in there. Oh, you I can see why you don't like playing. You're not very good at it, are you? <laughs> Steady. That is true. That is true. But then there's, there's other aspects of it. How do you score? I've never heard of a tennis player deciding, bugger it, I'll stop Davis Cup, I'll stop playing at Wimbledon, I'll play Toten Tennis instead. <laughs> Fact. It's that like your impoverished child, sort of like, you know, having a bit of fun. And uh, That's it, though, isn't it? The poor fun. kids. I wouldn't say fun. You don't like it? No, I don't I like love it. it. I don't like it. Are you it. upset you can't bet on totem tennis? Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> How can you bet on that? You were obviously superior to me. Within a fraction of a second, people here realise they put the money on McDermott to win. And rightly so, <laughs> I might add. Now, you can actually bet on totem tennis. You're just going to the wrong backyards. That's true. That's, That's true. That's it's true. a good game in Turak I go to. <laughs> it's uh, very, it's classy. To the death. It's a long game. You know, they waste away eventually. Well, they would with boredom. <laughs> Can I ask who's the Australian Totem Tennis Champion? Well, there no, is, just a, just there is none. No, thanks. It's a thanks. game, isn't it? It's just a, it's a game. It's a toy for children. Toy for children, exactly right. Yeah. And should be consigned to room 101. That's my view. Is totem tennis the sport for people who don't like to move? How are we ever going to become a number one nation in tennis if this is all we offer kids? We're never going to become number one again in tennis. We're never going to win the Davis Cup if all we can do is consign our youngsters, our fit young Australians. Sure, they might be on the couch watching this. They might be a bit loaded up. They don't want a game where they can stand still. That's the last fucking thing they need. They want a game where they move. They lose that weight. And all of a sudden, we've got another Nick Kyrgios on our hands. Nick Kyrgios never played totem tennis. Fact. <laughs> oh, yeah. Certainly feisty. You're feisty. But you can see where I'm going, can't you? It's got its points, I think. Did you ever go into the totem tennis trance, the TTT? The totem tennis trance. Could you demonstrate the trance for me? The trance? OK, let's, let's have a look at what we're talking about. Let's see what it looks like. The trance. I'll, I'll tell you about the trance. It's when you've been playing it for so long, you don't even notice the other player has left. Oh, yes, yeah, true. <laughs> true. What no. about the violence you can get from the totem tennis? Do you what? have siblings? It's, I do. It's my turn. No, it's not. Well, no. all of a sudden, here's the fence paling. My turn, bad. That sort of thing. Very similar. <coughs> yeah, bang. Do you hate it because it's like a pinata without a happy ending? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever play it yourself? 30 seconds, yeah. Okay. At a family reunion, some yes, sort of gathering? Exactly. A it, funeral? Usually with... Uh, Is uh, that just an Adelaide thing? Yeah. <laughs> Best ever totem tennis moment? None. Exactly. There's none, is there? Yeah, none. None okay. for everybody who ever picks up this fucking rocket. Exactly. <laughs> no You're doomed to disaster. Because it. it's just a blur of okayness. A Isn't blur it? of okayness. That's excellent. You've done So well. what do you reckon? Should I send totem tennis down to the pits of room 101? Get involved, all you doing? Yes, yeah. yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not swayed at all. That's not going anywhere. That's staying with us. 
for the five and six year olds that really love it, that enjoy it every Christmas and Easter. And so funerals in Adelaide can be fun again. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Well, this is a bit more than a sport. This is the concept of fourth. Yeah, now, um, I wanted to raise the tone, and so I didn't want to just be all negative, and I wanted to give people something to think about, and I just wanted to suggest the idea of fourth, where you can see that you're there, but you really need to go into the room and mirrors and have a bloody good hard look at yourself <laughs> and promise to do better next time, because fourth is just, you know, it's really just alfoil. <clears throat> Or a crushed, a crushed up and I tell you what, I tell you what hurts me most is I did pretty well. I had a good run and I came fourth. That's not good enough in my book. Fourth! <laughs> not first, second or third, but fourth! Yeah. You know, you can see where I'm going. So get rid of the fourth. <laughs> get rid of the fourth. But it does seem to me, conceptually, this is a little bit flawed. Uh, if you get rid of fourth place to room 101, do we remove it from our numerical system? So you go first, second, third, fifth. <laughs> what, what happens? I mean, if the kids... Stupid kids, even, will realise that something's missing. Look, OK, you could build a, a stadium where the highest rung was first and then you had a step down to second and a bit of step That's down That's how it third. normally works. It yeah, is normally works. You, so you yeah. could dig a trench alongside even down lower for the fourth. Yeah, yeah it's clearly this is a very personal, personal matter for you. It's very personal. personal. It's very personal. Most issues are personal, Paul. You being the master of hate would know that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have to get the public on our side. I just want to show you this, just because this guy did this, and I, I don't agree with it, but after the 2012 Olympics, British bookshop owner David Mitchell uh, took it upon himself to create medals for athletes who finished fourth. Now, right. would you ever take that out of the bottom drawer and show anyone? <laughs> What's amazing? Have the last word on this one. Well, we should. But how are we going to do that? Go forth and multiply. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Statement no, of I, I'm not persuaded by the argument of no. losing forth. I, I've got to say, is I came with a stronger position, emotional. How do you feel now? How do you feel now? No, though? I feel deflated. Deflated. I, I feel as I've run forth. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the final word. Let's keep the pony in the room. It's not going to room 101. We'll be back very shortly with a very heartbroken, very sad HG. You ready for it? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Good on, that came out nice and easy. Here we go. Okay. Ah. <laughs> this is the issue of paper cuts. Paper cuts. This is a silent killer in the community and there's not enough public awareness about it. Talk to me about it. We Harmless paper, silent killer. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable that we can cut ourselves with a piece of paper and have so much blood come out of ourselves. When we least expect it, we're doing something where our focus is elsewhere and all of a sudden I look down and there's blood all over my notes and I think, have I sprung a leak <laughs> or is it another bloody paper cut? And so you, then you've got to work out a way of stemming the flow, stemming the flow of blood so as people don't notice it. And so what you often have to do is I find that I have to hold my fingers like that. I don't know if you can get them like that. So he's putting pressure on the finger that's bleeding. And this is in a world where 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we were promised paperless offices in the future. <laughs> but still we get paper cuts. I think it's, there's got to be a public awareness campaign. It's a silent killer. It's a perfect storm. It's nature, though, isn't it? It's nature. Isn't it? It's nature. You mean if you cut yourself, you bleed? No, no, it's nature. I mean, we're cruel to paper. We use it to wipe our ass. It's just... <laughs> Nature's this, way of getting back. payback, do you think? Payback? Payback. Well, <laughs> wow, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> payback. You mean that paper doesn't like being written on? Paper doesn't like being wiped against your ass. Oh, no, I got that. I took that on board. Well, I, I thought know. that I was an I can't speak point. for all paper. I'm sure there's a little <laughs> percentage of paper. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe 8%. I'm sure there's some paper, toilet paper, that takes pride in its job. But I reckon generally that's a thankless task. Right. <laughs> Can I say that I've never thought of that, but what a brilliant idea. See, that's what I love about hate. 
all of a sudden we're seeing things in a different way. Mm. I came on this show tonight thinking, bloody hell, payback gives me the shits. Not in the manner you're describing, yeah. but just giving me the shits. <laughs> it's always cutting me when I least expect it. But yeah. then, all of a sudden, my head is spun around 180 degrees, paper getting its way. Yeah. Have you thought of any other ways that paper might get its you know, have its evil way with this. What about I, a ticker tape parade? I read somewhere you're terrified of ticker tape parades because you go through and going, oh, my pretty face, ow, ow, ow. No, I just see silent killers. That's what I see. I see people hurling ticker tape at me, trying to have their wicked, evil ways, <laughs> and the blame will never, ever get back to them. This one's a good one, in the webbing, just in there. Get a I, bit of, I you have. done that? Bit of paper? Shall right through there. You Annoying. done that one? You done that one? Yeah, done that one. Yeah. yeah. What about licking an envelope and you lick it the wrong way? Instead of going that way, oh, you go. Oh, I've way. done ah! that. One. Oh, I've done that. Paper airplanes. You like paper airplanes? You against them? Uh, are they dangerous? Should they the kids are not dangerous. Throw them? Well, yeah. Look, you know, often at a fundraiser. What about origami? How do you feel about origami? I, I, dangerous origami. My God, that swan looks sharp. Oh. <laughs> origami? Yeah, I'm against it. Hey, look at this. I uh, just want to show you this, just to show you that, uh, you know, if you're not careful with a paper cut, it can become infected. Yes. Okay, so let's have a look, please. Yes. Oh. oh. Okay, that's a paper cut. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but to me, that looks like a milk chocolate cherry ripe. Does anyone else? <laughs> no? I, I reckon you could market that. that. That would be a terrific thing. You know, eat my finger. But I think you'd find that if we surveyed the audience, people of all ages have cut themselves with paper. I don't think it's something to I do think with we, age. we all do it, yeah. But yeah. we don't do it relentlessly over and over. I must say I've cut myself with paper all my life. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't learned a damn thing, have no, you? No, I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't paper cuts a way of life? Aren't they a way of life? Haven't we had paper cuts since we called well, them papyrus cuts? Yeah, we probably have. But does that mean that they should be tolerated? Does that mean they shouldn't be hated? Does that mean they shouldn't be put into room 101? I think the case is overwhelming. I think we're going to get rid of it. I think it's, we don't have enough trees to chop down the forests to create the paper. These could be the last reams of white A4 we ever see. So, I'm going to consign paper cuts to room 101. Oh, Farewell. thank you very much. Yes, the read button. Good? That's right. That's Bye good. Bye. Yes, thank you. Julia Zemiro wouldn't like that. You know, it's something you really hate, this one. Something about sport? No, yes, it is. Okay, let's reveal. What do you yes. think of that? Excellent. Wow, okay, look at good. that. That's fantastic. Do you, do you know what it is? Uh, <laughs> look, it's the idea of uh, entertainment at sporting events, but in particular, entertainment at uh, before AFL and Rugby League Grand Finals. So it's a, mic it's a microphone indicating some form of entertainment Yes. at a football match. Yes, so what happens is uh, we uh, proceed through the season. We get uh, down to two teams. Once that's cut and dried, the next big question is, who's going to be the pre-match entertainment? And my interest in the game plummets. Now, you feel it's a waste of time, but you assume someone's getting something out of it. I assume the artiste is getting something out of it, like a fat wedge. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> big, <laughs> big bit of gold you're talking about. Yeah, that's right, you? that's right. Yeah. Something you can go to the shop Something and buy Something in the take-home, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Where do they find these acts? I mean, it is just a joke. <laughs> Remember, of course, the great night meatloaf, or should I say afternoon meatloaf, turned up. I think well, we'd we like to be reminded of this wonderful moment. This is meatloaf yeah, at the 2011 AFL Grand Final. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, give it up for the meat. Well, now, what was wrong with that? That every note almost perfect. <laughs> and it's what all the pageantry I, and wonder of it, isn't it? The pageantry and wonder of it. Yeah. That's right. And the people close up. I don't know if you, who, you know, would be this far away from, you know, His Royal Highness. The loaf, yeah. The loaf. <laughs> Mr. Loaf to you. Mr. Loaf. We're just gobsmacked. They don't know what they're looking at. Firstly, is this entertainment? A two out of three and bad sort of stuff. Yep. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. I can't really do it justice. Well, I think the stuff. words were really? taken right out of his mouth. And was, they were. Uh, here's a quote. Like a bat out of hell being crushed inside the larynx of a dying hippopotamus. <laughs> do, now, you know, do you know what the price tag for that was? Well, no. Reportedly, $600,000 for 12 minutes. <sighs> Worth it? 
Should that money have been spent on something else? Maybe something well, to do with football? We, should, we don't need it. Why don't we, you know, if we want to get kids playing footy, why don't we get kids playing Yeah, give playing them $600,000. Well, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Indeed, to get our tubbies off the couch and booting an AFL ball around. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing Can I show you now the opening ceremony of the World Cup Finals, 1994? Just for a change of pace. To yeah, show, change of pace. To show when you do it properly, it is sumptuous and it puts you in the mind for sport. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dana Ross. Work, it? it is. How did she miss? That was the key bit. Yes. I mean, imagine that. You know, you rehearse that. Just kick the ball into the back of the net. Don't worry, the goalie will fall yeah. out of you. You get the goal, it'll fall apart. You'll be able to run through it. Yeah. She was having a stroke at the time, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that was the issue. <laughs> not a great, not a greatest moment, one would think. No. You know, we all have Memorable. bad days at work, don't we? Yeah, but you know, these are people put in circumstances they should never be put in running around with all those people with the dustbin lids behind her. Yeah. Saying she doesn't kick a ball, she sings. Yeah. Well, you know. she doesn't even do that. Well, she, yeah, well, hey, OK, you've got the gig. What do well, we get from you, HG? Well, I think the best thing to do is have something which uses modern technology in a new sort of way, using big screens and the idea of people's mobile phones and, you know, sort of somehow creating images that people can watch on their mobile phones, the big screen, and involve the audience in a way. Do you right, know so you, I mean? st you still think there's potential in it? No, no, no. You no, have. You've risen to that, haven't you? You've come... Because I thought you'd just go piss it off, just get on with the game. Oh, just well, going to play. No, it's too late, I, mate. Oh. Isn't it? He lured me into yeah. his trap. Yeah. Horses bolted on and that then one. And then gave me the Liverpool kiss. That was going in. That was going in till just then. I can't believe that you, you did that. So I was going to put it in, but it's not going in. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. He's not doing too well. See if he does better the next time around. HG. <laughs> All right. It is what it is, isn't it? Certainly is. Okay. Yeah, the leaf blower. The leaf blower. It's the most useless thing ever invented. <laughs> and it moves, obviously, purportedly moves leaves from one A to B. Uh, often the senior member in the community of the house decides on a Sunday morning at 7.30 that it might be time to move the leaves off the driveway. <laughs> uh, and they are often petrol driven. <laughs> So, at 7.30 in the morning... There's a universal harmonic that you're reaching in, the, in that arm um, that it you've is. got there. Well, it shouldn't be. It should be a, 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 a should banging be a in the head. should be a bit annoying. For instance, if, the leaf, if you and I said, let's go out for the weekend and we'll take the leaf blowers and we'll strap them to the back of a billy cart and we'll turn them on and we'll roar around the suburbs, yeah. I'd be in it. Top night. <laughs> Top night. Top <laughs> night. Yeah. The I've got to be, I've got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm with you on that one because petrol-powered blowers... They billow biohazard into the air. Uh, the billow two biohazard into the air? The trusty two-stroke leaf blower belches out carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides and hydrocarbons. Yeah. You've got air pollution, carcinogenic pollutants and acid rain to move leaves, all of which the wind does with more creative freedom. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Well, I'm just wondering what your counter-argument's going to be here because, you know, as I've observed in this program, you do come back with some withering... Uh, look, withering... You know, in, uh, my, in my mind... A, a leaf blower used effectively, used by someone with a bit of skill, can be a marvellous tool for corralling the leaf. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So maybe the problem isn't with the leaf blower. Maybe it's you that's no, blowing a little I, bit of... Look, can I, can I suggest that we ta start teaching and using leaf blowers in schools? <laughs> uh, correct use, timing, all that sort of stuff. Corralling leaves, one. I don't mind that as a thought, rather than condemning it to room 101. So we're, we're looking... Now, in a more positive way, maybe it doesn't go in there. Already, you're starting to get shaky. Normally, it's only at the 45-minute mark that you start falling <laughs> apart on these things. <laughs> okay, is it the, the time of day? Would, would there be a better yeah, time, time of day? Yeah, there's time of day. No, look, I'm just... On I'm a Sunday, not good? No, Sunday, not good. Three o'clock on Monday? Three o'clock uh, Monday, okay. As the trade is knocking off, just that echo yeah, uh, of hum in the suburb. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't mind maybe, that. Maybe, don't mind Maybe. That. Could, could be talked into it. Yeah, but 12 who's, 30, 12 who's 30, blowing at three, three on a Monday afternoon? Who's blowing at three on a Monday afternoon? <laughs> no one. <laughs> well, once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. It may seem pointless to you, but there is an art to it. Yeah. So people that love leaf blowers must think, oh, this is great. As in, I've tied it up the backyard. I've had a go on my leaf blower. I've pissed off HG. Bargain. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. 
Hate is a multifaceted thing. Okay. You know. No, I don't, I don't blame you for that. Okay, let's give it a shot then. Yeah, why not? Okay. Now, I think you've sussed onto the game, right? Um, there's a hoop here. Now, you've got to blow the leaves into that hoop just to see if the leaf blower is a functional item for the garden. You're willing to give it a shot? I'm really willing I know you hate it. You want yeah. to consign it to I've everyone at I've never done it before, so don't be surprised if they okay. go everywhere. Can you go and stand rather on the other side of that? Wait a sec, fella. Take your leaf blower. You're going to need that. I mean, you've got a lot of hot air, but not enough. <laughs> don't start it yet. Just hold it. Okay, give me one second. I've got to get ready. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Here's the twist. Why, why doesn't that surprise me? Uh, a, a bloke who runs a show who thinks he's got a big dick, therefore he has a big leaf blower. All you've got to do is blow your leaves into that hoop on the count of three. One, two, three. You actually got some in there. You actually got some in there, which I think gives a little bit of leeway in my mind at the moment. I'm just looking for positives. Yeah, no, I understand. We have got a lot of leaf litter everywhere else in the room, so maybe not effective uh, in that regard. But look, how many is that? That's about 20 leaves, I reckon. Yeah, I, I, you know, for first time, I thought it was pretty good. Not a loss uh, for the What day. happened when I started blowing was a big southerly blew up <laughs> from both the other end of the house. <laughs> And I, I, had that. <laughs> I was restricted by my extension cord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got I to gotta be honest with you, after hearing how loud those things were and how ineffective they are, yeah, and how ridiculous it is, it's a crime by man against nature to try and, it, to try and orchestrate is. the wind it and is. control the leaves. It is. Stuff it. Yeah. Leaf blowers, room 101, farewell. Ah, oh, great, yes, good on you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, H.G. Nelson. <laughs> joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. That wasn't even dancing. It was skipping. She just kept doing that one. It could have just been the angle, but I found that quite fetching. Did you? I don't know if you thought this one through. This is a tough one. That's your family, Dave. You want to put them into room 101? Yeah, let's do it.